is the fire. Where is the fire? So yesterday, our beloved pastor, Dr. Ratara, reminded us very, very clearly to then say, you can move from a position of brokenness to gravity. We saw it with Paul where ultimately he then said, I would rather obey God than obey men. And the question again is this uh, is asked, where is the fire? So with that, I invite to the podium, our beloved prayer warrior and faith moving pastor, Pastor Ratara, it is your time, sir, over to you. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless all of us. Once again, I would like to add my voice uh, to the one, welcome everyone to this uh, platform. Very happy to have all of you around. Uh, it is just very inspiring to, uh, to know that uh, you are here very early morning, wherever you are, and uh, maybe in the middle of the night, this is a global thing. Some just the beginning of the night, the early morning, in the middle of the night, middle of the day, but we are here to pray. Yesterday, we have already introduced our topic, where is the fire? From denial to triumph. We have studied yesterday, my dear friends, that uh, Peter uh, denied Jesus Christ three times. Not just once, not just twice, but three times. But uh, we understand also, we studied also that uh, ye, uh, he became very triumphant. Uh, he was victorious. But we started to understand also the reason of this fall. Why then he fell? Why then he denied three times Jesus Christ? The first reason that we have studied yesterday is that he was overconfident. He was so sure of himself and he fell. And the second reason was that he, he did not watch. He did not watch. He did not pray. Jesus Christ asked him to watch and pray, but he did not do that. And that's why he became weak and he fell. He denied Jesus Christ three times. Let's continue to know the problems of Peter so that we can avoid them. We can avoid not to, uh, to be, uh, to fall like himself. The third reason of his falling, we find that in Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 58. We're going to read Matthew chapter 26 and verse 58. I can even read uh, verse 57, just to give us some context. And those who had laid hold of Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance to the high priest's courtyard, and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. So in verse 58, we can see here, we can find here the reason of his falling. But Peter followed him at a distance. He followed him at a distance. This might be kind of geographical. The distance in meters may be uh, 10 meters or 100 meters or 200 meters but it can also understood as a spiritual distance. So his problem, the problem of Peter, number three is that he followed Jesus at a distance. Yes, he followed him, but not too close enough. My dear friends, that can be our problem as well. We follow Jesus Christ, but maybe at a distance. There's something that we leave still between us 
between Jesus and us. And that is the reason why we become weak. So what is between us and Jesus right now? That distance is a problem that we have. Peter denied Jesus Christ. He did not have that strength because instead of following Jesus very closely, he followed him at a distance. So his commitment was not total. His commitment was just like a half, not totally surrendered to the Lord. And that is his problem. We ask this question today. Is there something between Jesus and you? Between Jesus and myself? See, uh, I, I appreciate my dad. He passed away. Uh, he was a wise man, strong, but kind and wise. And he likes to, he likes to uh, um, teach us through proverbs. You know, he was a chief and he has a lot of proverbs and sayings and telling us, you know, children, if you have to be bald headed, bald headed, let it reach the neck, not just in the middle of your head there, but let it reach the neck. So what is the meaning of that? Proverbs were saying, he was saying, he said, don't be a, a half Christians. Don't be a half Christians. Don't be a half followers of Christ. He said, you have to go all the way. Don't leave something. It has to be 100%. That was the problem of Peter. He followed him, but he followed Jesus at a distance. If you have to be bald headed, let it reach the neck. Let it be all the way, all the way, total surrendering our life to God. That is the key. That was the problem of Peter. And what is the next one? The next problem of Peter, we can find that in Luke, Luke chapter. Luke chapter 22. In Luke chapter 22 and verse 54 and 55. Chapter 22, verse 54 and 55. And I read, having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. This is the repeat. But the verse 55, now, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Peter sat among them. There's nothing wrong to sit among other people. But the sitting of Peter was not just a simple sitting. He was trying to hide his identity. He did not want people to know that he was a disciple of Christ. He wanted to be there, but not being identified. So when he was challenged, when he was exposed, he panicked. He was terrified. He wanted to hide his identity as follower of Christ. He was weak because he did not want to be known. He was there sitting among them. And it is even said that he tried to, um, to do what they did, tried to be just like them. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we do that, it's just a matter of time. You see, we don't want just to be Christians among Christians. 
among people of the same faith, like-minded person. But when we are outside in the workplace, we're studying, we're uh, at any other place, then we tried not to be known as the follower of Christ. It is just like being ashamed to be identified with Christ. And that is a formula for disaster, formula for being weak. Let's examine ourselves today. Sometimes we are too hard on Peter to say, oh, Peter, he's so coward. How is it, how is it that he's doing that? But my dear friends, sometimes we do the same thing. Not exactly the same, because there's no judgment, but the way we carry ourselves when we mingle with people, then that can say also that we are hiding our identity. Of course, we have to use wisdom, but this idea of hiding, compromising, this is a formula for weakness as Christians. So we need to avoid that. We need not to hide. We need to be proud as Christians. We need to be happy to see uh, that we are, we are chosen by God. And Jesus Christ he is God, he's a creator. He's not even ashamed to be with us, to be called our leader, our savior, our Lord. Why then? Sometimes we are a bit ashamed and we try to hide. Okay, somehow the... We can hear you. You can go ahead, sir. Yes. All right. We thank God that uh, I am back. We praise God. So I was saying, I was saying that the last, the last is found here. Before last, just to go back a little bit, is that Peter was ashamed of Jesus. He, he, did, he tried to kind of hiding himself. And that's why he failed. But there's another one. The last one. The last one is this. In verse 55. Now, when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard, and they sat down together, Peter said, among them. That means there was a fire there. There was a fire, but the fire was outside of him. Where is the fire? The fire was outside of Peter. And this is the fire of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit is not in our heart, we cannot be strong. And that's why during these um, sets of meetings, we are going to find a way to study in the Bible what to do for the fire to be on us, to be inside of us, to be in our bones. And that was the secret of Peter we are going to study his way back to Jesus Christ. But for today, let's just remember those reasons why Peter fell. Because, as we said, he followed Jesus from a distance, not close enough. And then he was, um, he said, among. That means you're trying, he tried to hide himself. And the last one is that he did not receive fully 
the power from above. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is the time now for us to surrender ourselves totally to God. This is the time just to be bold by the grace of God and ask, ask the Holy Spirit to give us that boldness and we can get us through prayer. And that's why today I would like us to pray and asking God to be strong and for the fire not to be outside, but within us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much that despite the fact that the uh, machine somehow gave a little bit of a problem, we managed to reconnect again by your grace. And now, Lord, we pray that we don't continue to follow you at a distance. We want to be so close to you. We want our life to be totally close to you and want to surrender everything, Lord, to you. And Lord, help us not to be ashamed of you, but to be witnesses. And above all, help us to be open to receive the Holy Spirit, not outside of ourselves, but to dwell in our hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.